Hello, hey there, I'm Aaron, and this is Camp Peculiar, a channel for visual storytellers who use AI art to support their webcomics, graphic novels, comic books, and animated comics. Let's talk about your comic characters, the characters you need for your webcomic or your comic strip generated from Midjourney, and how to get different poses or facial expressions after you've generated one that you like. This is a foundational video that will support the how I create a comic character sheet for easy peasy model making metal, but it's a bit of rare. I don't know what the title of the video is going to be yet, but it will delve deeper into the Photoshop part or really any image editing program of how to take a bunch of mid-journey produced character bits and make a full-on character sheet that will work with whatever story uh, you want to tell uh, using that character. You should be asking yourself right now, hey Aaron, is this really a trick as stated in the title of this video? Or is that just a word you use to try to get more people to click on the video? And this is really just more of a series of logical steps that are a little inconsistent, but do increase the likelihood of getting good result. Uh, the answer is it's both. It, it is kind of a trick, but it really is the steps that I use to begin the process of creating a character. Of course, you don't have to do this. You can just get a character out of Midjourney and put it into your comic panel, and, and hopefully it works well just as it is. But if you plan on using it for multiple stories or if your story is long, then this trick and or series of steps uh, I think will help. Worth noting, this is for mid-journey. Dali and Stable Diffusion work a little bit differently in terms of the creation and refinement process, but the process of finding a base image, generating tons of different variations, and then bashing them all together is still the same no matter which one of those AI art engines you are using. I also just covered the whole process right there in like three words, so you know, video over. Not really, let me actually show you how this works really quick. All right, so this is sort of a three-step process, and let's start with step zero. That's right, I just turned a three-step process into a four-step process without making any of the numbers actually go higher. So you need a good prompt. Prompt engineering is key, and you should spend a lot of time making sure that you get a good base character for what you want. For mid-journey, I go with the raw prompt. That's what I'm looking for. Then the style information, and then the parameters at the end. For example, pinecone character is the raw prompt, or you can go with pinecone cartoon character or pine cone with a face. Those are three separate raw prompts that you should try. I mean, you should come up with your own character, uh, but that I would try to try to find out which one of those raw prompts is sort of getting me what I want. Little changes here have big effects. You can also put modifier words on the beginning, like adorable pine cone character, cute pine cone character, plump pine cone character, skinny pine cone character. Then comes the style information. I usually put a comma at the end of the raw prompt and then a comma in between each style word. So that'd be like comic style, comic book style, children's book style. I have a few different style videos on this channel so you can look at those for more style information. Last thing are the parameters of the flags. Those are the dash dash things. And I usually just go with dash dash aspect ratio. Uh, when I put comic book as a style, I usually go dash dash no books uh, because there is a chance that by putting the word book in your prompt, Mid Journey will give you some books back. That was step zero, you fashioned an amazing prompt. Now step one is to use that prompt and find a good base character. What makes a good base character? Well, first, it, it fits the needs of your story. That's the most important thing. Two, you like it. That's uh, also important. Three, look for things like that the edges aren't cut off at the side, the top isn't cut off. There's not huge glaring problems that you're gonna have to fix uh, in Photoshop. You're looking for something that's clean and whole. If a lot of stuff is being cut off on your image, you can do two things to try to correct that issue. One is to change the aspect ratio, making it wider or taller, try to give mid-journey more room to work with. The other is to include prompt words like full body, upper body, torso on up, torso to head, things like that. You need to play around with the words to try to get things from being cut off or just generate variations till you find one that renders the whole thing. But that was step one, and all of step one was finding a good, clean, and whole base image that's gonna be easy to work with. Step two of this process is the variations. From the base image, you're gonna hit both the upscale with the number slot and the version with the number slot, both the U and the V for the number of the image that you like. The upscale version, we're gonna to wanna to take that all the way to max upscale, because we're gonna use it later as our base image in Photoshop, but that's in the next video. The one we wanna focus on now is the V in the number slot. This is where the trick comes in. 
Uh, but there's a non-trick version to it as well, and that is to just hit V on the character that you liked a bunch of times until you find facial poses that are slightly different or expressions that are slightly different. This does work, but it gives you kind of a limited range of facial expressions. It's all kind of within the first one that you got, and if you got a very default plain one, that can be fine. So here is where the actual trick comes in or the process comes in is that when you find that image that you liked, that base image that you like, and you hit the V and then the number for the slot that that image is in, Midjourney creates its own prompt by which it generates those variations from. You can see that prompt right there in Midjourney. Uh, and it's basically just your prompt, but Midjourney puts the image information on the beginning of it, or it puts a URL to the image on the beginning of it. That's it. It's nothing like fantastically and magical. It's just your prompt with Midjourney adding its image to the beginning of it or its image URL to the beginning of it. So you're gonna take this prompt that Midjourney uses to get variations of the image you like, and you're gonna use that as a prompt yourself. So you're gonna type in slash imagine, you're gonna copy the prompt that Midjourney used to get variations, and you're gonna paste that into the prompt section of the imagine part. But here's the thing is you're gonna change one word. And those words are just going to be one emotion words. That's things like angry, sad, sick, confused, shocked, surprised, any kind of emotion word. You can also do two words like closed mouth, open mouth, things like that. And you want to put that one word change to the mid journey variation prompt uh, right after your raw prompt. So pinecone character comma happy. Whatever your raw prompt was, just change one word, make an emotion word and put it right after the raw prompt, but before the style information. I hate to tell you this, but you're not going to get back just that character just as you put it in, but with different facial expressions or in different poses. It will work that way someday. It doesn't work that way quite yet. Uh, you're going to get a bunch of still different random things, but they should have faces on them that are usable, meaning we can put them into Photoshop, cut out the bits we like, and they should fit pretty well on top of your base model. That we're going to cover in part two of this video. There are two parameters here. Just to wrap up the last part, step three, there are two parameters that you can use to try to control the amount of variation you're getting within your variations. And those are dash dash chaos with a setting of zero. So dash dash chaos with a setting of zero is trying to tell mid journey that when you do the variation trick, when you feed mid journey back a prompt that it generated from a prompt you generated, that you don't want a lot of variation to those variations. I don't know how many times I can say variation in a sentence, but it's a lot. It's impressive. It's nothing I'm going pro with, but it's something that I feel uh, proud about. All right, the next flag or parameter you can use is dash dash seed or dash dash same seed. To get the seed from your base image or the image that you like, you simply go to the reactions area of the discord message in the upper right there's a little smiley face there you click on that and you want to use the envelope icon use the envelope icon that tells mid journeys bot to direct message you the information so it doesn't necessarily appear in the main uh, channel that you're in but it appears from the mid journey bot which you can select in usually the upper left part of discord uh, and then you'll see in there the images that it generated from that seed and you'll see the seed number so the full trick is to find a base image you like hit the V button to get a variation of that, copy that prompt that Mid Journey makes that just has an image on the beginning of it, and then put that back in as a new prompt and change one word by adding an emotion to it. You can also then add chaos zero seed and the seed number from that base image to try to control the variation of that output. And you're just gonna do that for all the emotions that you can think of. You're gonna generate dozens and dozens of images. And in no time, you'll have a bunch of faces that will work. We're gonna take that information into Photoshop and build out a character sheet where you should be able to generate almost any type of expression that you want. But we're going to do that in the next video. I hope you found that helpful. This will likely change. This is just my current process that I've had pretty good success with. And I hope you will too. Hey, if you like this kind of video and you're interested in visual storytelling using AI art, that's to make comics, web comics, comic strips, animated comics. That's all we do here is talk about visual storytelling. And so if you like that, like, subscribe to the channel or better, leave me a comment there. Let me know what you liked about this video, what you're working on, anything like that. And I will see you for part two of this video. Uh, sometime soon. No guarantees on when, but sometime soon.